thank you very much for joining. Um, this is our first webinar of our spring season. Um, theme of today's webinar is how to not let your agency run you, uh, a concept that I'm sure um, we've all experienced many a times. Um, today, obviously, is February the 22nd, and we will go through our presentation right now. Um, as always, we're going to be on the air recording this. This will be published on our YouTube page as well as other social media channels, but don't worry, nobody's going to be on camera just yet, so no, no Oscar for you guys yet. Uh, we will have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar where we might ask you to join uh, the conversation. Um, in which case, if you would not like to be recorded, please just turn off your camera and, and you will be perfectly anonymous. Um, so let's get started. Uh, my name is Will. I am the Chief Marketing Officer of Kobu. I am very excited to have you guys with us. Uh, it has been long in the making um, to provide this webinar series to all of our dear independent agency owners and friends uh, in the hopes to give you a little bit of knowledge and insight and at the end of the day to be quite honest just help you guys out um, and hopefully you walk out of this webinar with a little bit of knowledge and some tangible um, insight that you can you know you can use in in your agency our agenda for today, um, obviously, I already said my name is Will, so nice to meet you, everybody. Uh, our speakers today, I'm going to introduce them, um, William and Tassos. I'll give them a little bit of, of time to introduce themselves in a bit. Um, you know, we're going to have we'll dabble around three main topics, you know, maintaining this human touch in this digital world and transformation that we all keep talking about and hearing and I mean, uh, how many times have you guys heard OpenAI or ChatGPT in the last you know week or so? Uh, so definitely trying to to get some perspective and and try to you know kind of weed out reality. Um, our second genre or area of topic is going to be you know using you know what uh, you know staffing issues and how this entire like pandemic has changed our entire work culture that we all know, right? Um, we, we would probably be doing not a webinar, but an actual seminar, you know, back in the day, but now we're here virtually. Um, and then our third topic is gonna be, you know, based on, on management practices. And what, what, are, what are you guys going to take out of this that you can apply in your business tomorrow, today? Um, followed by a quick Q&A question session. Um, the chat and the Q&As are open. Please uh, make sure and, and, and type in your questions and we will answer them at the end of the webinar. What is Kobu? Right. Um, so, you know, I'm going to put my marketing hat on right now for just a second. If you please excuse me for that, I will be taking it off right after this small little pitch about our company. Um, and then we'll get on to the business at hand, which is kind of empowering you guys with knowledge. So Kobo is, you know, one of the only and, and greatest uh, full service agency platforms uh, that targets and helps independent insurance agencies. Uh, we do this because we help you manage your front and back end tasks. Um, our, our digital platforms gives you, you know, time. It gives you that, uh, that benefit of actually giving you the opportunity to enhance your customer relationships, grow your business, and really embrace this entire digital uh, revolution um, in, in a seamless and beneficial way. So I, I will talk a little bit about how we can empower and supercharge your agency, but as a company, what we do at our core is help agencies do what they do best, which is sell, which is grow. The only problem with doing that, as you guys all know, is that the more you sell, the more you grow your book, the bigger 
the back end gets and all of the issues that go around that. And it's a necessary evil. And you keep scaling and scaling and scaling and, and, and they keep growing and they keep calling and they keep asking for changes. So what we do at Kobo is we take all of that away from you and we help you with it. We will manage all of your back end, all of your customer service, cross-selling, upselling, everything. Um, so you focus on what you want, which is growing your book. And don't worry, we got your back. We'll take care of the rest and increase your, your book as well. Uh, and utilize all the you know, fancy words that we talked about before about AI and algorithms and cross-selling and this to really um, increase your revenue and also more importantly, keep your customers a little bit happy. Okay, I'm taking my marketing hat off now and let's get back to business. Thank you, by the way, for indulging me for a bit. I start getting itchy if I don't start selling. Um, okay, so our fantastic speakers for today, um, I would like to, it is a great honor and pleasure to introduce our Chief Revenue Officer, William Malone, and also our Chief Insurance Executive, uh, Hassos. And please, uh, you guys, say hello. <laughs> so, uh, William, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Happy to. Um, <laughs> I've, uh, I've been in the insurance industry for um, over 25 years. Um, Work at a variety of uh, insurance carriers, um, primarily uh, the Hartford and Chubb. Um, I'm looking at the panel of attendees, and I've actually been in some of your offices. I recognize several names, um, so good to see some of the names. Good to see everyone. Um, I've worked in a variety of uh, distribution channels, from digital distribution to more traditional insurance sales, uh, property and casualty personal lines and uh, small commercial, um, med mal, professional liability, life insurance, all of it. Insurance is my jam. Insurance is my jam. So happy to be here. I love it. As well. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Tess? Yeah, so a little bit about myself. Uh, Greek, born in Germany, um, raised in the U.S. I started my career uh, a little over 40 years ago. So 1982, John Hancock, agent, um, uh, building a general agency after that, uh, then an executive. Um, and then uh, as the mid-1990s rolled around, it was pretty clear that we could change how we do business um, and make the agencies much more effective. And that's when I first started uh, the first version or the Web 1.0 version of what Kovu is today in the 90s. Uh, built it to 500 million of revenue, sold it to Allianz. Um, and then replicated uh, some of that work uh, with captive and uh, independent agencies and brokers in uh, Europe, Asia Pacific, um, uh, to the tune of another, let's say, 27 uh, entities for Allianz uh, or joint ventures um, that I uh, had equity in, uh, some of them. And then, um, uh, you know, did the 2.0 version um, in Europe uh, with WeFox. Uh, building, which is the largest insure tech, profitable insure tech um, in the world. Uh, and now back to the U.S. to actually um, replicate that 2.0 version um, here in the U.S. So really excited uh, to talk about uh, how agencies can uh, be proactive and, uh, you know, run the business and, instead of having it run us. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you. All righty. Let's move on. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. I think I spoke a little bit about that before, but uh, you guys are all muted, not because we don't want to hear your wonderful voices, but um, but just so we can move forward quickly. But do please ask any questions in our uh, Q&A, and we will gladly get to them uh, at the end of the webinar. Uh, if for some reason there's some issues, you can always email events at kobu.com. Uh, and we will try to adjust or or maybe we can put it in the chat as well. Um, and again, I mentioned this is going to be recorded. Um, so you will be getting a copy as well of the presentation with some of the answers transcribed and um, to your emails at the end of the webinar. Okay. So these are our questions and let's get started. So um, why don't we start by... 
you know, this is a kind of beer to myself is, you know, what opportunities are there in the insurance industry uh, that we see arising from, from, you know, this society of moving everything kind of, you know, online and, 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 and just this gradual kind of movement there. Um, what, what, do you, what do you see? Let's say, uh, William, what do you, if you want to take this one? Sure, Will. I'm happy to. And I would say that movement towards online is not even gradual. Um, it, it, is, it is full bore. Um, and, and as society continues to move further and further online, um, obviously there are opportunities uh, throughout the insurance industry now and more will continue to arise. And if you think about the, the growth of e-commerce and, and digital payments and demand for online insurance, right? Um, agents need to be able to provide customers and, and insurance carriers too, uh, but certainly agents need to provide customers with fast, efficient service, um, both from policy acquisition to the actual back-end office um, issues, renewals, customer service, things like that. Um, additionally, when you consider big data, right, the rise of data analytics and artificial intelligence, um, that's going to enable agencies to customize coverage options to meet the specific needs of customers, right? So it's not everyone gets 100-300, um, as an example, um, it's, it's very, very specific to the customer and some of it's gonna be automated. Um, think about connect, connected devices, right? Uh, wearable yeah, smartphone technology, um, insurers may start offering products tailored just for those types of systems. And then if you think about um, like blockchain technology, um, it's gonna make it easier for individuals and agencies uh, to securely manage their own personalized policy information. Um, I think that's just, just the tip of the iceberg with what we're going to see. I mean, if you think about it as an independent agent, right? Um, we're at a point where if a customer gives you their vehicle identification number, you can get them an auto insurance policy without asking anything else, but you can also probably give them a life insurance policy, a health uh, health plan and, and more, right? Just from getting the vehicle identification, number, right? It has nothing to do with the other lines of business, uh, but, but information is so readily available now. Um, so I think those are some of the changes that, that we're going to see in opportunities. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, like you said, this is something that is 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 here, and it's you know it's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And and I think how we adapt and incorporate and evolve is is pretty much how we survive. So um, so I think that's it. Any any thoughts on that, Tassos, that we would like to add? Or? I guess the main thing that I would I would like to add is um, agencies are not running this now. Um, and this is something that's 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 running you a little bit today and probably will end up running over you in the future if you're not careful. Um, uh, most of the work so far that's been done on this has been done by carriers, right? So, so they're the ones that are starting to reach out directly to the customers. They're the ones that are starting to actually say, hey, use our services and we'll provide customer service and we'll do all these various things. Um, uh, for your customers and use data and so forth. Um, but but you're going to be a big loser in that if you don't turn that around and and you become proactive and 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 you recognizing that you have the ability to own your customer across all of these areas, give them the kind of convenience and services that they want online. Um, you know, you need the right partners and so forth. but to, but to, to do that yourself, um, because at the end of the day, you're in the best position to do that because you're an in, you're independent. You can actually do the best thing for your customer across multiple carriers. Um, um, so you're in a much stronger position than the carriers are, but you have to take advantage. If you're going to just ride the coattails of the carriers, follow their platforms, follow their approaches, um, you know, it, it, it won't be a good outcome um, for independent agencies. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think on, on on that on that note, I think why don't you take our next question because I think it it speaks directly to that, which is, you know, customizing insurance. And I think William also spoke a little bit about that, you know, and and we talk about this a lot in, at, at Coco, you know, and 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 how would you think, you know, where where do you see the future of like micro insurance and and, and customized policies? Where do you think it's headed? Well, the key to customization is understanding, all right? So um, 
Uh, and if you look at understanding, there's a huge part of this that is data, huge part of this that is data. Um, uh, the customizations that were happening in the 80s was, let me gather some information from you, customer, so that I can better understand you, and then I will provide a custom quote to you. Somehow, over time, that turned into an automated process of here's just a bunch of quotes and here's just a bunch of information. And it was the opposite of customization, right? I mean, it, it, it was totally mass. You know, how do I actually get through this process as most efficiently as possible? Um, we definitely need to come back around now on this customization bit. It's for sure going to eventually get to the internet of things and the wearables that are gonna give us so much granular information about the individual, the assets that are around them and um, uh, the risks that are around them. Um, for sure, it'll get there. Um, uh, but until we get there, until we get there, there's so much work to be done just right now in order to customize um, for the needs of the customer. And it starts with data. And one of the things that agencies have not been good at, and I'll say small business generally, smaller agencies especially, is gathering data and then retaining it, making sure it's structured, and then reusing it. Um, um, and for sure, there's uses now that are AI and machine learning associated with that to help you customize in a very efficient way an offering to customers. Um, um, for sure, the longer road is you know, customers interacting with their environment and their environment providing data where, where then their risks are pretty clear um, of what they're going to enter into. And then coverages either being afforded to them or automatically provided to them. So this is how far it'll go for customization in the future. But we've got a long road before we get there. I'm more concerned, at least today, that the agencies are not doing enough to gather the necessary data keep it, store it in a um, uh, structured way, and then being able to reuse it with the use of technology to make it really efficient. Absolutely, absolutely. I think on, on that note, I'm gonna shoot the next question to you as well. Uh, William, do you have any, any input on that last question or? No, I think Tasso's yeah. nailed it. The, the, yeah. the gathering <laughs> of, of data is one thing, but the actual use of the data Right, is, is something totally different, M making that data into usable information. Um, that's what's often missing. So, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yep. tangible. So, uh, with that in mind, um, Tassos, what, what do you, I mean, I, I think we're transitioning right now into as, as an insurance agency, you know, technology and this investment in technology. You know, is it going to waste without, you know, the proper people structure or process optimization or change management? What are you what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, there's been a tremendous amount of money spent on technology investment. And one of the things that we've learned uh, in terms of what the outcomes were of that is more than 80% of that technology investment did not have a return on investment, did not have a return on investment. Um, and, and many of the projects related to those um, are listed as being failures. Uh, one of the main reasons from my perspective is, is we're not recognizing um, that you cannot go at this with technology alone. A good example of that would be an AMS system, agency management system. Um, it's a, certainly a much better system today than 10 years ago or 20 years ago, but the value derived from it is not optimized at all because we are not putting the processes around each one of those customer processes of new customer, new business, renewal, remarketing. We're not putting the process around them. We're dealing with it as if it was a technology challenge and we're solving that technology challenge, which is a real positive, but we're not putting in place the process optimization related to that. And all of us who've been in this business for a while know that you cannot grow without other people, right? So it's not just us doing the job. We need to actually get people involved, but inherently these people have been following their own promise processes and they've been actually doing things in a certain particular way. And now you bring them with new technology to do something differently. The whole change management approach 
you know, where people now have to actually look to do things differently than they were doing it before. Um, this is one of the reasons why small agencies are not nearly as productive um, uh, as they can be. And, and there's huge value from companies like Kovu, you know, where we're actually bring in the technology, the processes, and the people together in order to actually make the outcomes exactly what we want them, efficient, effective for the agency, um, and then also really convenient uh, for consumers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think they all, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I'll get this system. This will solve everything. <laughs> That'll fix it. Um, fantastic. Uh, William, I'm going to I'm going to ask you this one. Um, how do you think, you know, how has customers lack of trust in insurance company been affected by the pandemic and everything that has happened in these past years? Yeah, um, it's been impacted quite a bit, actually. I mean, we all know, right? Customers do not typically read their insurance contracts. So put that part aside, right? We know that a lot of um, business continuation claims uh, were not covered, but business interruption claims were not covered because um, the pandemic is not covered under policy, right? So put that in the corner somewhere else. Um, but just insurance companies' lack of staffing, um, because, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of folks decided to do other things. Um, so some insurance companies did indeed um, have prolonged uh, delays when it came to paying claims. Um, and, and had difficulties, periods, getting the claims processed. Um, and while that does fall on the insurance carrier, that trust or lack of um, spills over into the independent agent because the customer thinks that the insurance agent and the, cust and the insurance carrier are joined at the hip, right? That's your partner. Um, so, so that lack of trust is both in, in, for the insurance company, but also for the insurance Agent. Now, the insurance companies have done a pretty good job, uh, and they continue to do a pretty decent job in having proactive communications. Right? They're trying to plug the gap and, and, and retain or regain customers' trust with proactive communications um, and just re reassure them that they're going to uh, fulfill the obligations. The insurance carriers have that process very well baked. I've, I've lived on that side for a long time. I know that they have that process pretty well baked. Um, there's an opportunity, though, for insurance independent insurance agencies to do the same when it comes to proactive communications. And again, when it comes to some of that type of thing, um, we do that pretty well for, for our agency partners, um, but, but the, the traditional small insurance agency, um, they're going yeah. out to try to sell policies. They're going out to try to service policies. The more policies you sell, the more you have to service, right? So some of this other stuff, the really important stuff, the trust building, the proactive communications, the proactive marketing, that typically falls by the wayside. Um, so, so it's hard to regain that trust once it's gone, but proactive communication strategies could help that immensely. And again, the carriers are doing it really, really well. Something that I think is really important. Um, uh, it's not directly related to the question that you actually had there, but um, the need for insurance has only grown because of the pandemic. The recognition that um, people need help when you know things like this happens. Absolutely. Um, uh, so the need has just gotten bigger, but the gap between the need and what people really are doing about it has gotten larger. Has gotten larger, um, and a good example of that would be the Gen Zs, right? So. Um, young people are just not buying insurance. They're not buying insurance. Um, the you know amount of insurance that they're buying is just really, really small. And most of them have a very cynical, relatively speaking, a very cynical view concerning insurance. Um, and the only people that are going to solve that problem will not be the carriers, will not be the insurance companies. It's going to have to be an independent agent or a broker who represents a customer and actually brings them in. So again, this is you know kind of back to almost sales again in the old days, brings them in to the insurance business um, because today most of the work is actually alienating them, right? They're just not buying. Absolutely. And I think that's that's the, the key here that they're 
they're not buying and 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 then you're right like who who's gonna who's gonna be there to help them <laughs> you know it's asked. um so how do you think um you know how do you think based on the question the previous question tassos what do you think how can Kobo help ease the customers' fears, you know, and enhance this trust in local agencies? I mean, you tapped a little bit into it right now, but what what do you think? What do you think it, it can be, um, you know, can reinvigorate that trust in agencies? Yeah, I mean, the the basics would be fulfilling the core value proposition of an agency, which is customer I. Uh, independent agency, I represent you. Um, I will understand you. And I will actually find the products and services that are best for you. And I will stay with you through the moments um, uh, of, of, of where trust really is a big moment, like claims and, and um, uh, things that happen in your particular life. I, I will stay with you through that particular part um, so it's really this customer uh, uh, advocacy um, um, and customer representation um, rather than insurance company <laughs> representation on the other direction. Uh, I think this can go a long way. Um, and it's it's basics, right? It's actually what was mentioned earlier uh, by William. It's communication with customers, you know, being able to actually communicate them on a regular basis. So we need to actually be reaching out to customers, not only in the renewal cycle, not only when it's in our best interest, you know, to try to cross sell or whatever, but, but actually to be able to get a little bit more information about them, make sure that what we do is optimized for them. Um, uh, and we need to do it in an efficient way, of course. Um, and this is where the customer portals are going to be really important. And, and these customer portals cannot be the carrier's customer portals, right? Um, you can't expect a customer to actually be logging on to five or six different carriers portals because they have different policies for different needs. Um, and especially this is our role as agencies, our roles as advocates is to actually give the customer this particular um, information and make it convenient. But we need to have regular um, uh, interactions with these customers um, and really be advocates in moment of truth, um, you know, like claims. Yeah. I mean, we've all heard that. Like, oh, my insurance agent's calling. Oh, I must, it must be time to renew my policy. That's why he's calling. How can companies and entities kind of like Kobu support agencies and operations? You touched a little bit about that. Like what, what would be the benefit for, for, for an agency in terms of the operations? Um, so the collaboration, an agency at the end of the day um, has a, a very difficult task in that they've got to bring together uh, a lot of different parties to make sure that the needs of a customer is actually met. And, and these parties are going to be multiple carriers. Um, um, so there is a whole, in the old days, we would have called the tripartite relationship that has to actually be built in. But now it's not relationship in terms of, hey, I know you, I like you, and so forth. It's actually data. It's actually flows of data. Um, um, so really important that we actually have ways of being able to gather necessary information on customers, be able to actually understand appetites of carriers and start, you know, providing that really good matching service um, between what customers need and, and then the carriers that are there. Um, uh, and when you look at the operational aspects of doing all of that, again, you need technology for the efficiency and customer portals. So the customer actually has access to their data and they can actually see their data. And then you have people you need customer service reps and you need actually account managers and sales support people, um, not the person who is the producer, the core producer, because we want them to focus on production, right? But you need this operational aspect to be able to actually fulfill customers' needs, you know, almost 24-7 um, in today's uh, lifestyles um, in order to be able to do it. And then all of the normal back office activities um, which represents a lot of, let's say, hassle for customers. You know, um, it's very difficult to do things efficiently, either with an insurance company or with agencies in many cases. So being able to actually collaborate um, uh, with Kovu. And as most of you may be recognized, but for those of you who don't know, um, Kovu really takes the full end-to-end -end responsibility for all of the customer service touch points, 
all of the renewal remarketing, all of the activity related to actually servicing that existing book of business and does it in a very efficient way and a convenient way for customers for the benefit of the agency. So the agency reaps you know, more profitability, more growth, but also um, at the end of the day, providing a better value proposition that's future-proofed. Um, because again, the carriers are really moving more and more into your customers. Um, um, and one of the best ways to shield them is actually to make sure that you provide those services yourself with a partner like Cobra. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're, they're literally every day, they're getting closer to the customer. <laughs> it's almost like, William, what key players, you know, in the insurance industry, do you see undergoing the most change, you know, in the future, you know, in the next decade or so? Wow. Um, I'll tell you, the last three years have been amazing to watch. Uh, but for the next decade, um, certainly insurance brokers, I mean, the big are getting bigger. Um, in, in one of my prior roles, um, I led the digital distribution team for one of the largest insurance carriers in the world. And I, I do not exaggerate when I say every month we would have one of our broker partners, and we've all heard the names that some of the larger brokers out there, Marsh, Aon, et cetera, um, more and more moving into the digital distribution space, right? So they are finding a way to get to their customers quicker and much more efficiently, right? Those are two different things. You can be quick, but not efficient. They're trying to do it quickly and much more efficiently um, than anybody else. So they're going to be impacted because they're adopting the technology in real time right now. Um, the independent agent is certainly going to be impacted um, because one, you have the insurance carriers who have all of the horsepower, as Tassos mentioned earlier, they have all of the information. They are leveraging this data to get deeper and deeper into your joined customers. Um, the, the, the brokers, again, are doing the same thing, right? but again, the big are getting bigger. Um, so, so those who can leverage technology going forward and do it quickly, those early adopters, they're going to be the ones that become, you know, the, the Amazons or, or the, the Ebays of, of, of distribution uh, when it comes to staying in touch with their customers' needs and anticipating customers' needs. That's when the, the data and the AI really come into play, when you can actually anticipate a customer's need before they do. Right. This is what I'm talking about when I mentioned some of the proactive outreach. Um, those who do that well, win. And far too often, it's the carriers who do it. It's the larger insurance brokers who do it. There's no reason that in the, the smaller independent agents, and I say smaller compared to the brokers, um, independent agents can't do that. So again, I think those will be the two biggest um, industry players that'll, that'll see the most change, the insurance brokers and the independent agent. Um, oh, and by the way, everybody, um, our panelists didn't see these questions. So I'm like literally like spraying them on them. And Thanks, Will. Like, oh, oh. Thanks, Will. <laughs> Sorry about that. But hey, gets the excitement going, you know? It's like, you don't know what's coming next. Um, okay. In this case, what is coming next? Why don't you take it as well, William? Um, you know, how, how can a, a small independent agency adapt to all these changes and all these titans of the industry and insure techs popping out of like, you know, it's like whack-a-mole, you know, it's like <laughs> every corner there's one more. And, and you know, how, how do you think they can, they can you know, scale and, and grow and, 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 you know, and, and survive even at one point, you know? Yeah, and, and, and survive is, is the optimal word here, um, because as I mentioned before, you know, the, the larger carriers and the larger brokers are doing this now. They're doing it now. And far too often, uh, we, we, we all get comfortable in the way we've been doing things, right? I, I've worked in independent agencies um, directly, um, but all, I've also partnered with independent agencies in my prior roles uh, in field leadership. Um, and, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, We've done it this way for the past X years or the past generations even sometimes, right? And it's gotten us this far. Why change? Well, because at some point it does become a matter of survival um, if you do not adapt. Uh, but, but folks can stay on top of the changes uh, by, by making sure you stay up with the latest trends, reading all the journals, 
um, the, the insurance journal as an example, uh, invest in technology. And that investment can either be you buy the right technology or you find a technology partner, Kovu as an example, um, to help you scale and grow your business. Um, leveraging your own employees' skill sets and, and, and expertise. Um, I, I've learned so much by just sitting down and talking to independent agents or the CSR or the producer or the agency owners and principals um, throughout my career, uh, things that you don't find necessarily in a textbook or in a journal. Uh, sometimes I think that some of these independent agents should write for some of the journals uh, because so, so many of them are doing it the right way. and They are embracing technology and moving their agency forward. Um, make sure you're always evaluating your processes. Are you doing it the right way? And sometimes that means attending um, local events, like local big eye events, and understanding what other folks are doing. Um, having a clear org structure so that the staff and customers know who to contact, when they need to contact, and why they need to contact them. Um, but, but again, the, the biggest thing that I, I, I could stress is um, understanding the technology, understanding the opportunities that exist when it comes to technology and finding the right technology partner um, can help agencies quickly scale, very quickly. So yeah. those are my thoughts. Any, any thoughts, Tassos? I think what William uh, said, which is uh, the partner, I think is the key, right? Um, independent agencies, uh, uh, if you want to scale, if you want to grow significantly, um, it doesn't happen by yourself, right? I mean, it, it's it's um, you, you're going to need partnerships, and you and you've already experienced that in terms of when you've gone through layers of growth. You know, uh, um, you had to, you know, hopefully you 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 found a partner that could help you leverage or scale uh, that business more. So I think the partnership is is really key here, um, and so having an aligned vision, you know, that you have aligned with that particular partnership. Uh, is really the key to it because there's a lot of partners out there that might be able to actually get you some outcomes, um, but it may not align to your vision. So I think if, if you know what you want, um, find a partner that actually aligns to that particular vision and uh, don't go it alone. Yeah. yeah. I think that's uh, one of the key things I wanted to also highlight is, is what you said, William. Uh, like, well, it's been working for us for 20 years or for 15 years or however long. You know, and I'm, uh, it's doing just fine. And, and we all tend to fall into that trap, um, you know, uh, as many have titans of any industry have in the past, you know, who, well, last time you heard about Polaroid or Kodak or God knows what other companies, you know, and, and, and I think that survival is, is key as well. So it's just, literally trying to embrace that and, and asking for help you know there's no you know using what's remember, available there remember blackberry no i, <laughs> my BlackBerry. I miss bbm <laughs> i did not embrace technology <laughs> yeah yeah i missed that one so oh i guess we're wow that went by fast jesus that flies when you're having fun um so we're 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 on to our q a session uh, let me take a look at our questions really quick. Uh, we have a few. Uh, uh, how can Kobo help us track with, oh, with tracking and cross-selling? I like that else? one. Can I, can I take that one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I was going to take it too, but OK. Uh, OK, <laughs> you can do a follow-up. You can do a follow-up afterwards. Um, and kind of summarize what I what I said, which would be great. But uh, at the end of the day, um, customers have lots of needs, right? So this is such a parallel interest between what the customer needs and then the agency, you know, wants. Um, uh, at the end of the day, so uh, CRM, old word, but having the customer in the center. Um, uh, we actually make sure that we actually structure all of our data and all of our information on customers, not just around policies. So this is an example of where a lot of times the systems and the way that we went about things for insurance was not helpful to this. 
because we were thinking about more policies than we were thinking about really customers. Um, but um, when we actually structure all the data around customers and then understand what are all the various customers' needs and what have been fulfilled by policies we have and then understand what they might have in other places, um, we can start identifying for sure gaps for cross-selling, um, um, but also we can identify ways that we can actually get a higher share of the customer's wallet, you know, which is some of the policies that were not provided by us. We were not the producer, it wasn't under our code. We can actually replace um, some of those policies and bring them in because why? We understand the customer better and we actually can actually better, make a better offer for them than what they have currently. So um, uh, putting the customer in the middle, having the data around the customer, and then making sure that we actually have an understanding of what, what products do the customer have with us, what don't they have with us. And in most cases, there's still a lot of gaps where customers are just not being insured or they're underinsured. Um, um, so there's still a lot of you know, money on the table for us there. And this is, by the way, one of the key KPIs that have come out of all of my various experiences with the version 1.0 in the beginning in the US and Europe and, and so forth, which is being able to actually increase the cross-selling to about 33% um, per quarter in the best case scenario or per six months in the worst case scenario. What that means is you can get 33% more revenue per customer um, every three to six months and that's huge, right? That's absolutely huge. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? Um, yeah. I, um, William, do you want to say a few words on this topic? No, no. I, I actually love uh, listening to Tassos. So this is great. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Because I'm itching to talk about this topic. <laughs> of course. Of course. That's I'm what gonna, we do, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put my marketing hat on again yeah. uh, for everybody. Because, oh my God, I'm so happy somebody asked this because cross-selling nowadays is, is where, yeah, that 30% is a real possibility. And it is not just um, everything, exactly what Tasso said is precisely what we do at Code One, precisely what my entire team focuses on. It's all about presenting through life events, through data, through behavioral data, through any single source, um, the correct product at the right time in the correct way. So uh, the way we help, uh, not only with tracking, but with cross-selling is by identifying those key gaps, like Tasso said, uh, in your customer's portfolio. And then now that we know what it is, utilizing what we've learned about your customer and what type of content they engage with. A simple example I always make with everybody that I speak to is like, you know, if we were all in the same, you know, geographical location, we're, you know, we're all male or, you know, if we take three females in the same geographical location around the same age, you know, traditional marketing segmentation would lump them together and it would be like, oh yeah, they're all guys. They're in the 20s. Boom. They fit one. But when these guys in their 20s go and, I don't know, shop for a new stereo, one of them's probably like, oh, no, no, no. I want to, you know, I want to see what the wattage is and what's the suppression. What I don't, I don't know anything about radios or sound systems, but I would imagine they would be about this. Another person might be like, oh, you know what? I, I, I just want something simple that can play some music or that's Bluetooth capable. And the other person might be like, I want the best. I don't care what it costs. I just want the best audio system I, I, I can find. Even though on paper, they look exactly identical. They have very different behavior and trigger mechanisms for the purchasing choice. Identifying what those are early on within your customer's life cycle in your agency and then adequately approaching them now, not only with the correct product at the correct time on the correct channel, but with the correct message that's going to resonate to them increases your conversion tremendously. And um, and I'm going to put my hat off and I get so excited. So I'm going to stop talking because I can stay here for like three hours. Um, but anyway, let's get to another question. Um, okay, how can Kobu uh, help 
our virtual micro niche market focus agency. Wow, oh, that's a that's a good one. First of all, congratulations because that's actually future focused for sure. I think um, that's terrific. So the fact that you're virtual um, uh, Kovu basically means that we will basically improve the offering that that uh, you have with your virtual um, customers. Um, um, so the portals that the customers are able to actually utilize would be enhanced. Um, the communication between um, either digital offers or you know, supported through sales support or account managers who go out and talk to the customers are going to be supported virtually and, um, and digitally. Um, the other thing I would say is the uh, micro niche market, if I understand it correctly, it basically means you're working with a lot of niche type customers needs. Um, and maybe they're not all rank and file standard um, it's not where all the insurance companies are are trying to actually get the exact same customer. Um, they all have some types of niches, and and maybe it's more um, uh, along the lines of a specialty uh, product or more difficult underwriting uh, challenge. And uh, and this is another way that Kovu can actually help you is to be able to actually source um, or or get the capacity from carriers. Um, we have a much more buying power than a smaller agency would have. Um, with these carriers, and we can actually bring forward products um, that are of the appetite they want, but also of the niche markets that you basically need. Um, so it's really for us, the whole end-to-end -end piece, the supply piece, which is providing the right products that your niche market needs, as well as the um, digital capability for customers and uh, your people to be able to actually use and interacting with those particular customers in the most efficient and uh, modern way. And Talsos, if I can just add one thing, and as you try to source more leads, more clients, um, you're able to actually sell to more of them because we would be doing the servicing for you or for your team. So you can convert many more of these leads into potential customers or into policyholders or clients um, while we take care of the other stuff. So that's an important thing to consider. Fantastic. Um, there's really good questions. Um, on, on that note, I think I'm going to, uh, there's two questions that we need to get to, but one of them was um, interesting. How well trained are the Kobo employees who interact with clients or potential clients? Are they newbies? Are they noobs? I wish Charles were here, yeah, uh, exactly. chief yeah. operating officer. He takes such pride in like recruiting and getting like elite. Yeah. But um, so no, all all of our um, uh, sales support or account management people are fully licensed. Most of them um, over ten years, um, proven themselves. Um, uh, we have uh, several individuals that are doing nothing but actually training them and actually getting them to the higher level of uh, capability and success um, across states, across product lines, um, and so forth. Um, so the quality of the people that interact with the clients is really critical. So this is where, again, we're not just talking about only technology. You need technology and great process and great people. Um, and we've combined those uh, at COVID. Fantastic. Thank you. And, um, oh, what is the cost for Kobu services? That's probably a good one, an important one. Yeah. When we look at Kobu services, um, what we basically look at is people costs and technology costs. And for the most part, um, agencies are spending between 35 and 45% of their revenue um, on people costs and technology costs. What we do at Kovu is 30% um, of the revenue for people and technology costs. So uh, for most agencies, they're going to save maybe 10%, 20% um, um, of uh, you know, their costs in terms of expenses for people and technology by using the Kovu um, people process platform. Fantastic. And then there was another one that I spotted here. Uh, what products and services does InsureTech company Kovu offer? Sure. 
Um, so certainly the traditional personal lines service. Um, we would service those policies also um, small commercial, um, medic uh, Medicare, Medicaid. Um, and if you have, so those are our core. However, um, if you have a niche market, uh, we can certainly um, discuss how we can service those as well. Our staff is pretty well-rounded, um, but new partnerships require adaptation, as we mentioned earlier. So if there's something that uh, you specifically would like to discuss, um, feel free to email. And I think, um, Will, at the end of the seminar, are you going to share contact information? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Excellent. So please so, yeah. feel free to reach out. If I didn't mention something um, that, that interests you or, or that your agency specializes in, please feel free to reach out directly. Fantastic. And we have three minutes left. So uh, with that, let me, here's uh, contact information for us. Uh, also, if you would like to reach uh, myself, William or Tassos, um, we will send a follow-up email with the presentation, but it's very simple. Will at kobu.com, Tassos at kobu.com or William at kobo.com, um, quite easy emails, um, but we'll send something out. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending. I'd like to give a great hand and applause to our panelists, uh, William and Tassos. Thank you so much for 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 attending. This is, as I mentioned, our first of many um, spring webinars that we're planning. Uh, we're going to have different topics. Uh, please uh, send us your feedback to events at kobo.com. If there's any particular subject or area that you would like us to focus on, we're certainly going to deep dive. I think this first session uh, webinar was more broad in nature and to try to kind of tackle as many of the key issues that we feel are important to independent agencies. As we go forward, um, we're planning on having these more often and deep diving into particular pain points that um, that you guys are facing and that we can support with. Um, with that, any final thoughts, uh, William? No, oh, thank you for being a great um, panelist and, and, and host. Job well done. Passos, final yeah. words. Yeah, I agree. Thank you for being a, a great host. Thank you for attending um, everyone. And um, I guess the thought that I'd like to leave you with is, uh, if you want actually to run your agency, get a vision and then find a partner who actually is going to help you get there. Um, would love to talk to you about it. Thanks. Absolutely. Fantastic. Everybody have a wonderful day. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week. And thank you so much for attending. Um, and we will see you hopefully soon. Take care, everyone.